Emma the big guy for no babysitting for my ex when her husband is in the hospital. Things are completed, but I'll try to sum it up for you. I met my ex-wife seven years ago. We dated for one year and we are married for two before we divorced. When we met, she already had two kids from her previous relationship. Patrick and Luna, we have one son Tony together. My own relationship with her kids was good, but they never treated me as their dad or something like that, because their dad was involved in their life although my wife had primary custody. We all understood I was a stepdad and were fine with it. My relationship with my ex-wife was good and I thought we're loving. Although, after our divorce, I realized that she used to talk a lot about her ex-husband, comparing the two of us and stuff like that, which is definitely weird, but I didn't notice it at the time. Well, turns out that she really couldn't forget her ex and she ended up cheating with him. This was very hard to process when I found out thanks to one of her friends and our divorce was not easy. When her family found out about her infidelity, they got very angry at her and went and see with her. All of this happened four years ago. Ever since her and her husband had two more babies together, three and a few months old baby. Her husband got diagnosed with cancer around November last year. Even after everything they did to me, I still feel sorry for them and their kids. It's a sad situation, which makes me think I'm a bad guy. My ex and I have shared custody with our son, but ever since her husband got sick, my son has been staying with me more days. And sometimes my ex-husband has to stay at the hospital and my ex has to help him. I'm okay with this, of course. However, my ex asked me if I can start taking all of her kids home with me when I pick my son in this kind of emergencies. I told her that I don't want to do that and instead she should ask a friend to take care of them or try to pay a babysitter. I pay good childcare and I know they got not spending all the money on my son at the moment because he's mostly with me. I think it'll be enough to pay for a couple hours. She told me her friends don't want to help her anymore and her family still doesn't talk to her. I told them they need to figure out a solution. I will only help take care of my son. I feel like a bad guy to be honest, like I'm being too pity. I'm the bad guy for snapping at my sister after she told me that I'm not leaving because I'm a widower who doesn't want another partner. My wife died up five years ago from a sudden illness. We'd been married a year and together since high school, so obviously it was a hard time for me. I got through well enough, I think. And now I'm content as I think I'll ever be now. I have no interest in another relationship and I'm content to be single for the rest of my life. This caused a lot of friction with my friends and family. After the first six months, I got an increasing number of people telling me to put myself back out there and even setting updates without consulting me. I'm not interested. Any people doesn't seem to interest in that. And I've even had therapists and grief counselors mention offhand the need to move on five minutes into session. Now that the years have gone by, some of those people have been less kind about it. I've been called names, insert loser, a disappointment to my wife. They really like to use them. She would wanted you to move on. Like, like they have no other talks we had. My sister has been one of the worst offenders. She acts like I'm a drug addict being enabled. I've been told by her that I need to grow up. She came by to visit, or so I thought, a few days ago. After some small talk, she mentioned a friend's hers who was looking for someone. I reminded her I'm not dating, never will. She got angry at me and said I'm not leaving and I need to get it together. I've tolerated this talk for years and I finally snapped. I yelled at her and told her to shut up. I told her that I was in fact living my life and she needs to stay out of it. Where I may have been too far is when I told her I lost my wife. I can survive without a sister just fine. And that's what I'll be doing until she apologizes and back off. So now I have the whole family blowing up my messages, saying I'm a terrible brother. So I'm at the bad guy.
I'm out of the baguette for not hosting a party my wife planned earlier this week when I had planned long ago to only play video games this weekend. So, Zelda. Tears of the Kingdom came out today on the Nintendo Switch and I have been looking forward to and planning for this game for years. Zelda has always held a place in my heart when I can escape the mundane of daily life, especially as an adult who works a full-time job, pay bills, so and etc. No kids in the household, it's just me and my wife. Starting six or so months ago, I told my wife that when the game came out, I will essentially become and the hermit and go into a hole for the entire weekend of its release. I will eat, sleep, breathe Zelda. I continue to reiterate to her my plans every time the topic come up, and even more so as the game got closer to release. I took time off the work as I put this on my work calendar as soon as I know the launch date. Fast forward to earlier this week, I reminded her again that I would essentially disappear this weekend to do what I want to do, which is to play the new game Owl Weekend. So, she then plans a move night with a bunch of neighbors for tonight, on lunch day, so I made sure to clean up the house, do the dishes and even did like four loads of laundry and reorganized the lining closet in preparation of this weekend. The time for the party rolled around and I took a break from playing, made all popcorn and set everything up in our home just for her and then went back to play the game. As guests showed up, I welcomed them and showed them the way to the theater's room and continued to play my game. When the movie was over, I greeted them again as they left and then I helped clean up the kitchen on another short break. Fast forward to now, my wife is mad at me for playing my game downstairs while she hosted the movie night alone. She said it was weird and stupid that I couldn't carve out a couple hours for the movie night. It's just a stupid video game, she's saying. I reminded her that I made my plans for this weekend month ago and that what I did doesn't contradict what I've been telling her I will do for months now. So, am I the bad guy for playing my new video game while she hosted the movie night? Am I the bad guy for helping my niece pay for her dream degree? against her parents' wishes. My niece Ella is 17. She is well soon be in her senior year and plans to study history in the university. She is a good student and she'll definitely get in her safety school at least. My sister and brother-in-law are not happy with her choice. They want her to get a degree which will lead to good job opportunities like science or engineering. I make me to hide six figures and I'm a single father to one daughter, she's 15. I also am a big believer of doing what you love because life is short. I told Ella that if she can get a scholarship, I will provide her with financial aid during university and she can pay me back whenever. She's now working on her early admission and is doing volunteer work while cutting her usual summer job hours at the local amusement park in Hull. My niece's parents called me a huge bad guy for doing this. They said I don't understand their struggle. My brother-in-law started liberal arts and work as a HR in a medium-sized company and my sister has an associate degree and is currently manager of a chain restaurant. They are doing okay but they are not comfortable. So they said the only reason I got to throw my money around is because I'm an engineer and my late wife was a pharmacist. We got useful degrees that help us get ahead in life. They said, if I thought a degree that wouldn't make money is so great, maybe I should pull my daughter out of the gifted science program. She's in at her school. I told them I know plenty of people who studied various different degrees that are successful, but they said the successful ones ones are far in between. They also said they don't want Elsa to set a bad example for her brother Ben, who expressed interests in being a veterinarian. I told them I will support her decision no matter what, and if she's doing what makes her happy, that shouldn't be a bad example, and Ben is too young to settle his mind on anything. So then threw them out of my house. Still I wonder 
Ni ma de berga hea. So also are. I only said for her to pay me back, only to make sure she doesn't waste her opportunities. I intend to make a gift of it upon her graduation. That's it. I'm mother begged for emailing my fiance's dad about her DNA results. I secretly met my fiance, biological father, who is adopted and had no links to his real family, to inform him that his family had been found through her 23andMe test results. So, three years ago, she bought 23andMe tests for us. Her parents, mom and stepdad, and my parents. This was a deeply meaningful gift because my five-old brother have tormented me all my life with claims that I was adopted or that our dad wasn't my dad since I don't look like everyone else in the family. I'm tall with red hair, so it's really held on I want to get definitive proof that our parents are both my parents. What we weren't expected was for results for her biological father families to show up. She wasn't expecting to find many familiar connections because she's first generation American. Initially, there was a third cousin connection on her paternal side. And over the last couple of years, it's grown in a practical family tree. I know that she had stopped speaking to her dad over 10 years ago because the most he did for her was remember to call on her birthday and that's it. She explained her reasons for not wanting to give him the information, but they honestly didn't sit well with me. I tracked down her dad's email address in her contacts list and sent him the list of his own relatives. I completely forgot about it until her mom saw a social media post about him finding his family and told my fiancé. She was very emotional as she told me about the phone call with her mom that said she was happy for him. She made a comment about how we didn't have anything to do with it, so I confess to what I did done. She was furious and this has created a major issue in our relationship. So, I'm at the bad guy for sending her dad, who is adopted, her test result that identified her biological family. I'm at the bad guy for calling my friend's proposal disrespectful. Alright, so here's the deal. My friend decided to propose to his girlfriend of three years, Diana. So, let's soon meet at the bar pre-covid and were just chatting at first but it quickly led to more and eventually the two of them moved in together and discussed marriage so personally i think they're great much and my friend steven has never been happy so he told me that he was planning to propose to dina and i was ecstatic well the day of the proposal hits and I called Stefan the next day, which was last night, to congratulate him. But he wasn't happy. He told me that Dina had said no. I was shocked. And asked if you know why. He said that she didn't like how he proposed. Now, here's the thing. I know he was going to pop the question, but I didn't know how he was going to do it. So he thought it would be romantic to propose at the place they met. Yes, yes. A bar. So, already I couldn't kind of see why she might not like that, but I decided to ask her privately because she and I have gotten to be close, so she confident in me. That's because she told Stefan multiple times that she didn't want to have a public proposal and that she was horrified he will do that in a bar of all places and that she felt disrespect that he didn't accommodate that. I told Stefan that the proposal was honestly really disrespectful and seriously kind of messed up, to which he told me I was being an intensive bad guy and she'll be supportive as his friend rather than talking down on him. But I don't know if I'm wrong here. So, this whole situation played out for definitely that I expected. Dina and Stefan are still living together, sort of. So, Dina was upset over the whole event and has spent the past couple days mostly at her parents' house and then working it out with Stefan at night. Dina said she's working on forgiving him but mostly has been bothered that her wishes weren't met. 
At this time, they're not engaged and Zina has no plans for that anytime soon. I did tell Stefan that if they stay together, I will help him plan a proposal in the future. She three of us live in Florida and we're all relatively close to the beach. So I suggested to Stefan that next time he proposed he do it in the evening at the beach or somewhere private without a lot of people or noise. So Stefan also told Zina he's planning on returning the ring he bought and will be giving her some of the money to use for whenever she wants. I think he ordered flowers to be sent to her work too, so if I'm not mistaken, I guess it all worked out in the end. What do you think? I'm at the beggar for telling my girlfriend it's my car, not our car, and considering hiding the keys. My girlfriend and I are in our early 30s and have been together for 10 years, yeah. We live together for over 7, but we both don't see the need to do an official marriage. I've always been a car guy and recently bought a used Corvette. I'm not loading by any means, it is used from 2008. It's not the greatest model in the world, but it's what I could afford and it makes me happy, yeah. Hopefully, when I'm older, I can afford a nice one. This is my second car. I have my truck as my daily car. Now, I'm not one of those dictators that says my girlfriend can drive in. She's a safe driver and I trust her. My rule has just been to ask me to make sure I don't plan on using it first. So, recently, we've been having issues. I'm getting home from work two to three days a week to find the car gone. I called girlfriend and she wanted to take it to go to happy hour with her friends. She has a house showing, she has dinner, etc. Point is, there is always some sort of reasons she has that she's taking it for. This has begun to annoy me. I paid for it with my own finances and personally, I don't think she has a right to it whenever she wants. I do think of it's my car and not our car. I told her as much after I reminded her my conditions and she brushed me off. She basically said my reasons are dumb and she can do what she wants since we live together. I told her it's not hers to use freely and it's my car. She still brushed me off and saying I'm being selfish for not sharing but there is time I plan on using it and it's gone because she took it. I shall never have that problem. Now I'm considering hiding the keys from her or most likely just taking the keys with me when I go to work. So am I the bad guy about this? Am I the bad guy for not allowing my husband's family to sleep in our bedroom for the weekend so that they don't have to get a hotel? My husband and I our hosting Memorial Day weekend at our place with his family. We live two hours away from my in-laws. We only have one guest room that his sister and her family are staying in. And my father-in-law got a nearby hotel. This brother has two small kids, six years old and three years old. Anyways, my husband texted me while I was at work saying he offered our bedroom for his brother and his wife and his two kids to stay in for the weekend. I got upset with him, saying he should have asked me first and that I don't want to spend our memorial day weekend sleeping on the couch in our own home. So I asked my husband to retract his offer. He apologized, saying he didn't think it was a big deal. Now I feel bad, but I still don't like the idea of giving up our bedroom. I feel like a big witch now. So we live in a 3, 2, 1 guest room, one office and now a master with a pool near the beach. Family never visits us since we are 2 hours away. So that's why the family wanted to come over for the holiday weekend. I told my husband that I will pause this story to see what the other thought. And he told me to be prepared to see how many people will call me the bad guy. Well, to our surprise, a lot of you agree with me that it's weird to let four people sleep in our bed. He has gotten tense and wants everyone to be together. He says he wants to hang with his siblings when the kids are put to sleep. And if they go to a hotel, that will make it less fun. I am definitely feel guilted in the backing out of saying no and loving it. So, yeah, 
Thank you all for your responses and validation. So yeah, also we have an air mattresses for the office. He's saying we shall sleep on the air mattresses or the couch. Couch is more comfy. And let his brother family sleep in our room since there is four of them and only two of us. I'm definitely people pleaser especially for his family but the situation sucks. Even though many of you say not the bad guy, so I still feel like the villain because it's a simple fix and logical to just suck it up and sleep on the couch. Yeah, going to have her read the comments later, so yeah.